Hello, YouTube friends. Hi, how are you? It's another YouTube tutorial by Nick Wan. Oh, that's me. I'm that guy. We're gonna walk through how to submit to a Kaggle competition. If you check out my community Kaggle contest, there's an expected strikes community competition going on right now. And an uh, interesting twist is that the benchmark submission is my submission. So try to go and beat my benchmark submission. And if you can, let me know in the comments and definitely post your notebook on the competition site. But before we even get there, I know a lot of y'all are just starting out with machine learning. Sometimes a lot of us can train a model, can predict on the test set, but we don't really know what to do right after that. Here at Kaggle, here at Kaggle, I don't f***ing work at Kaggle, okay. Sometimes we just have to be able to know what the next step is after we train our model and predict on our test set. A lot of the time on Kaggle, you're going to output something on their test data set. So today we're just going to walk through how to make a really simple model. And we're going to submit a Kaggle notebook entry. Uh, there's a link to this notebook uh, down below. You can actually just change some of the paths and run this with these data sets uh, from the housing prices competition and from the spaceship Titanic competition. First competition we're gonna to submit to is this Housing Prices Advanced Regression Techniques competition. You could actually see that at the top of this, it actually says Getting Started Prediction Competition. This is one of the entry introduction competitions. Tons of people do this one. This will get your feet wet with Kaggle. Don't feel bad if you submit something and it isn't necessarily the greatest. Just being able to submit anything is important, especially when we're learning how to submit entries to a Kaggle competition. So I'm gonna just create a really simple model here. Uh, I'm just taking in the uh, training data set and the test data set and the sample data set that they provide. If you go to data in the uh, competition, I'm gonna agree to the competition here. You could actually see that here's the sample submission, here's that test data set, and then here's that training data set. And so I'm just loading those data sets in here and I'm gonna train a model. I'm just gonna use any columns that have numbers in it. Uh, you can use more columns if you want. You'll get a better score that way, I'm sure. But I'm just gonna make a really simple model. Anything that had numbers in it, I'm putting it into my model and I'm predicting on sales price. Why are we predicting on sales price? Uh, that ends up being in the notes here, sales price. Property sales price is in dollars. This is the target variable that you're trying to predict. Another way to know what you're predicting is in that sample submission, you can see that they want sales price and also uh, the ID. So uh, we're predicting on sales price. We have all these numbers, uh, all these columns that have numbers in them. So let's just create this model. I'm just gonna run through this data set right now. We're gonna predict this model. The model is done predicting. We're just using a really simple scikit-learn gradient boosted machine, gradient boosted regressor. And so the first thing I tend to do is I tend to print out uh, what my output is. And so here is my test data set. And here's the output. Uh, I have the ID column in there and I have my target column and that is sales price. And so I could see that I have a bunch of IDs and I have a bunch of sales prices. All right, this is looking not bad. I also wanna print out my sample submission just so I know that it's about, it, it's, it's looking about the same in terms of the IDs and in terms of the sales prices, we're using the same uh, data type. And in this case, it's a float data type. So uh, I can see that I have floats in my sales price and then the sales price for the sample submission we also have floats so it's looking pretty good the second thing that i like to do is i want to look at the size of the data set in my test set that we predicted on we have uh 1459 rows and here are the two columns id and sales price in the sample submission it has exactly that same amount of rows 1459 rows and two columns those two columns again the ID and the sales price. So it's looking really good. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's submit, let's uh, let's export this. I'm just gonna call it my solution. And I'm using Google Colab, so it just outputs here in my Google Colab environment. I'm gonna download it. It's downloading right now. And 
Now I'm going to go back to the Kaggle competition and then I'm going to submit my prediction, submit predictions. And then I'm going to take my solution here and I'm gonna drag it and drop it into this submit to competition area. And once I do that, I could, I could write a competition, my cool first competition uh, entry. Wide people happy in chat. We've created this uh, sample submission. We've created this, not just a sample submission, we've created a submission, and now I'm going to hit submit at the bottom of this. I'm gonna hit submit. It's going to go through, and here we are, my, my solution in here, and it says my cool first competition entry, wide people happy in chat. And there we go, some white people happies in chat. Thank you, thank you, y'all. And here's my public score. Uh, this is basically saying, uh, compared to all the other people who put out submissions, what my error or what my loss or accuracy is. Uh, 0.1429. If I go to the leaderboard, I'm gonna see people with really lower scores, and that's okay. Um, and then down here, here's point. Uh, 1425 and so uh, here's my entry right here my first entry welcome to the leaderboard uh, point 14299 and that's right between uh, Junichiro Taka Takaya and Patrick Elizondo uh, so definitely not last that's pretty cool uh, but definitely have some ways to go uh, so that's what a Kaggle competition entry looks like and if that was pretty straightforward to you then cool but if you're wondering well uh the entry that i have isn't necessarily going to be uh just float maybe if i want to play with something that's true and false maybe something with multiple labels let's go through another entry just like this one let's submit to another getting started prediction competition. This one's Spaceship Titanic. You might be thinking, oh, is this like the, yes it is. It is like the Titanic data set. Yes, it is a Spaceship Titanic. So predict which passengers are being transferred to an alternate dimension. And again, if we go to our data, I'm gonna say I understand and I agree. Uh, you can see uh, the sample submission, uh, it's going to want a uh, passenger ID and transported. Transported is going to be true or false this time. Um, and then we have our test data set and we have our training data set. So that is exactly what we have here. Here's our spaceship Titanic notebook. I'm going to load in. I'm going to load in and I'm going to load this data set again. You might be working off Kaggle's notebook. You might be working in your own environments. Your path is probably different from mine. I'm using Google Colab and I'm using my Google Drive. So this is where it lives for me. I've loaded in my data. And again, just like the previous notebook we just worked on, I'm just gonna use the numerical values. I'm just gonna use anything that had numbers in it. So I'm going to fit my gradient boosted classifier. And then I'm just going to predict uh, uh, a probability onto my test data set. So let's run through that. It should be pretty quick. It's done, it looks like. Now let's take a look at uh, the top uh, of my data set. Let's look at the top five and let's look at the top five from the sample submission. And again, I like doing this because it helps me inspect uh, whether my solution is gonna be similar to the solution that's in the sample solution. And in this case, it isn't. So I have these probabilities uh, of people who are going and the sample submission wants trues and falses, right? So um, clearly not the same. So let's do a little modification of my probabilities since these are probability of people transported. Let's round the predictions and then let's uh, turn that into a Boolean type so it gives me true and false responses. Uh, so let's run through that and then now let's take a look and you can see now we have instead of what we had before probabilities, now we have transported true and falses. And if you wanna really inspect here, you can see that uh, this one's like a 79%, this was 6%, uh, here's a 79, here's a 92, here's a 53. 
And down here, uh, that matches up. So uh, trues for everything except for that 6%, which ended up being a false. Not transported to an alternate dimension. Banished to the Shadow Realm. Okay, uh, so now we have our test set. It looks the same. Another way to check this, if you don't like just eyeballing, because sometimes you might have strings, sometimes you might have numbers, sometimes you might have numbers that are strings. Um, another way to do this is just using the D-types uh, method. And so I'm, I'm in pandas here, and I see that uh, passenger ID is an object, and transported is a Boolean variable. Uh, sample submission is the same thing. So we have an object for passenger ID, and then we have a Boolean variable for the transported uh, column. So uh, we have the same file type now. Again, let's take a look at the shape. The shape of this looks pretty good. Uh, 4,277 entries for our test data set and 4,277 for our sample submission. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's export it again. We're gonna call this my solution. And when this is all done, we could go back to this. Let's download my solution. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just naming it my solution. I'm gonna submit my prediction. Again, just drag and drop into here. Uh, since we had something called my solution already, we're gonna do my solution one. Guess what operating system I'm using. And then when it's all done, we can type in the description if we want my first submission, NW Dance. So now let's just submit this. I'm gonna click submit now. And there we go. My solution's in there. My first submission, NW Dance in chat. My score is 79% accurate. Uh, and if we go to the leaderboard, uh, I can jump to my leaderboard position if I want. I will jump, and it says right here, my first entry. Uh, so again, not last, not first. Definitely some work to do if we want to make this better. Uh, but my first entry on the leaderboard, 79658. And it looks like that number is pretty popular. So that is how you submit an entry on to Kaggle into a cow competition, some TLDR if you made it this far. Uh, make sure that you have the same rows, make sure that the data types are aligned and that they're the same. Using the sample submission as a guide is really, really big. And once you're done, uh, when you upload it, uh, if you have all those in check, then it should be a flawless entry. So thanks for tuning into this one. Uh, really short one, but hopefully that lets you know how to submit a Kaggle solution up onto a Kaggle competition. So thanks. Remember, Nick Wynn versus is happening on January 31st. Uh, this is year 2023. Uh, and if you're interested in a longer Kaggle competition, you should check out my Kaggle competition uh, on expected strikes in Major League Baseball. Uh, you could check that out probably in the link below down there somewhere. So, And if you're really interested in hanging out with us, uh, feel free to join us over on Twitch. We stream live Monday through Thursday starting around 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and we just do data science all night. So if you want to hang out with us and everyone you've seen in the chat through this tutorial, uh, I'll see you over there. So thanks. Mwah. Hello, I can't hear you over all the content I'm producing. Oh yeah, I'll call you back.